Hi everyone, welcome back. In this video, we'll kind of follow up to our, this is a follow up to our ISF simulation video where we looked at how to simulate the ISF of an oscillator using cadence. So if you go back to the notes, which you can actually find on my website, you can see that, let me show you what that looks like. So you can just look at these notes. If you go back to the notes on the ISF phase noise models, we defined what the effective ISF would be for a cyclostationary noise source. And we said that the effective ISF is a product of the ISF that you simulate uh, or calculate times something called the noise modulation function, NMF. So we would like to find out how to simulate this NMF directly uh, in cadence. And that's what we'll cover in this video. So let's make a copy of the oscillator we just analyzed for this NMF. <clears throat> Okay, um, so this should be a quick video because it's fairly straightforward. Okay, so essentially the NMF is the small signal transconductance, the GM of the transistor, and you can show that using some theory, but uh, that's exactly what it is. You can normalize the GM and that gives you the noise modulation function because that's when the transistor is actually active and injecting noise into the circuit, right? So essentially we'll see how to simulate the GM of a transistor that is inside the core of an oscillator or even this one, right? So that requires a specific test bench. So I just wanna mention that this test bench was developed by one of my colleagues, Ali Ghazizadeh. Uh, I'll leave his name in the description, uh, but we tested it together at the end today and it seems to be working very well. So uh, that's what we're presenting here. Okay, so let me actually load the previous state. And then I don't need any of these. I don't need this. And I also don't need the ISF values. Okay, so we would like to let me delete this pulse source. So we would like to essentially use uh, this transistor, copy its environment around it so that you get an identical transistor on out here somewhere and then find the GM of that transistor, right? So the way I'm going to do that is I'll make an exact copy of this. Okay, and then I want to sample, so let me actually label some nodes. M1 source. M1 copy ring, M1 copy gate, and M1 copy source. Okay, so this is M1 source, M1 copy drain, M1 copy gate, M1 copy source. Okay, so now to make uh, the VGS and VDS of this transistor the same as this one, uh, first let me put a ground music here. I'll use a VCVS, which is a voltage controlled voltage source. So, and log library has this element. Okay, you can put it here. And then we'll label these. Okay, so for example, if I want to do this to the gate, then the labels of the gate are Y. And uh, I'll need a ground label. And then M1C gate and another ground label. Okay. So oh, this is Y versus ground, M1C gate and ground. All right. So essentially, I've copied the gate voltage uh, from here. The gain of this is one. So the gate voltage applied here is the same as the gate voltage that's sensed from here, right? And we need three more of these essentially. So I'll make one copy there. And then another copy maybe here. So maybe it's good to arrange them so that this looks like the transistor itself. Okay, this here. So we'll leave this as the gate, we'll make this the drain. And the drain is X, right? And this one is the source. So it's coming from M1S, 
it's going to m1cs okay that's basically it and now what we want to do is we want to add a small additional voltage source here to provide a, a, some dv right so gm is di ds over dvg so this is the dvg part right so i'll say this one has dvg as its uh, voltage can kind of move this all right so the gate is connected to here that goes out to the gate drain connects here goes to the drain source connects here and goes to this source and that's it so now we can launch ade it's already open and I'll copy some values from here. So the only one that we made is this. I'll say this is like one millivolt. We'll check what value to use, but one millivolt is small enough when the swing is around one volt, right? And we want to set up a periodic steady state simulation to look at the transient results. This is F0, this is 20 harmonics. Yes, conservative. We want to simulate transients. I'll say it's an oscillator and I'll select the positive negative nodes and hit okay all right uh, and then we want to save some outputs so i'll save uh, outputs to be saved i'll save this one and i will save this one because we want to check how much current difference there is from this little source right okay then we can go ahead and run the simulation it should be instant almost. Uh, results, direct plot, main form. Go to PSS and say you want to plot the current, time domain. Add to outputs. Let's plot this current and this current. Okay, so you see it's very diff very little, the difference, which is what we expect, right? Close, and then we'll send these two Send it to calculator. Okay. Uh, let me delete these and then subtract them. Make sure that you subtract the right ones. So we should do NM3 minus NM1. Right? So this should be 3 and this should be 1. And if I plot this, that's what the current difference looks like. And we need to make this into GM. So I'll have to divide this by variable DVG. DVG, that's right. And we also want to normalize this entire value. So let's plot this. That doesn't want to plot because I have an extra bracket. Uh, wrong okay so that plotted um, why is this negative so let me just check that uh, give me a second okay i guess i did have to have a bracket because i was only dividing this factor from the right hand side from this term so once i put the bracket in there uh, and divide by the vg then it actually looks fine, right? That's what that looks like. And we need to normalize this to one because the NMF function is normalized, right? So I'll just make a copy of this and then divide the whole thing. Bracket. And then divide the whole thing by Y max of the result. Okay. And if we delete these, Okay, we see that it's max at one, right? So that's exactly, this is the NMF function. Send this to outputs and call this NMF. Okay, that's basically it. So let's run that again. Delete these, don't want to look at these. And we can change this to 0 0.1 milli and then see what difference that brings in. It's identical. So 
Okay, that's good. So that's it. That's the NMF function. So what you can do is you can let me save this. All right. So what you can do is you can plot the NMF even for this transistor. Just make sure that you replace this with exactly this copy. Copy of this one. And then relabel these nodes and you'll see the NMF. So uh, maybe I'll quickly do that. Okay, so you can see this is the NMF function of the bottom tail transistor and this is the core transistor. And that makes sense because the tail transistor is always conducting, almost always conducting except for when uh, uh, the voltages cross each other, which is somewhere here. Uh, but otherwise it's very close to one because it's always conducting. Whereas each of these other transistors, the core transistor, they only conduct for about half the cycle, right? And that's what the current looks like. And that's the GM looks very close to that. So essentially this gives you the alpha function. Um, uh, sorry, not this. Yes, this alpha function. And uh, you want to find the effective ISF. We showed you how to calculate the gamma function and now you just multiply them and that'll give you the effective ISF, right? So that completes, I guess, the, the discussion on ISF for phase noise analysis and how to simulate it. We'll also, if time permits, we'll look at ISF also for injection locking in a future video. And the next goal is to look at PPV models, PPV theory, and uh, how do you simulate that? And also, how do you simulate ISF from PPV using the periodic transfer function simulation in cadence? Okay, so that was a short video. Thank you so much. Uh, hopefully it was useful. I'll see you in the next one.